So um, the first aid industry is extremely crowded. It's very similar to the children's activity um, providers um, and, and all the different things that you do. And in fact, you might be quite worried to know that you can start training first aid with just a three-day first aid of work qualification. So um, <laughs> it is quite alarming and there are a lot of people out there doing, doing just that. So I'm going to try and share with you some of the ways that we've tried to stand out in our market and hopefully they'll be relevant and applicable to you. Um, and you'll see some of the um, CAA side of things as you go in because uh, I have been entering the CAA awards for a long time because I like awards which I should be talking about too. So um, I will be going through steadily, I should be pressing the button, we're talking fairly low tech here but I might just perch for a minute as well. Um, so how to stand out in a crowded market and enjoy your business. So this is um, us. So I started First Aid for Life 10 years ago, and I worked really hard to try and um, to identify and build our brand so that we built it on quality and expertise. So that's what, what we're trying to, trying to do. So uh, initially it was just me, and as we've grown, I um, started getting my team of trainers, um, I now have 23 trainers and they're all medical health and emergency services professionals. So surround yourself with the best people to provide um, your activity for your organisation. Uh, we've got a very good training room that we have built. We converted the basement into a nice purpose-built, bright, airy training room. So we've got great facilities. Um, and. Uh, when we started doing that and I started um, blogging and writing and sharing and sharing expertise, some good things happened and some interesting people started being interested in us and I've since been um, asked on, on, on various news shows and things so I end up being a spokesperson on First Aid and First Aid Matters, which I love. Um, if I'm going back to uh, living the life the week after next, um, where we had such a laugh. I was on there for the best part of an hour because the other guests didn't turn up and we were busy doing CPR and um, fibrillators and, and everything on live TV, which was great fun. Um, but uh, so, so good things happened. And this one here was at the Mum and Working Awards when I won there and Caprice, so I've got that one on there for, for Suzanne and, and Co, but I think they've gone, um, to say that at the end of winning the award, Caprice came and gave me a hug and then she asked me to come and do her training for her, which was, which was lovely. So winning awards has all sorts of different benefits and that wasn't one I was expecting. So I uh, went to Caprice's house, which was um, wonderful. <laughs> so so that, was, that was great. And the other thing we, we did was we won um, the, best, the Federation of Small Businesses, Best Business in London. Um, in uh, last year, which, which was great. Um, so, so what we've done, so these are the sort of awards that uh, we've been entering, and um, entering awards is fantastic. You don't have to win them. Being nominated alone gives you a really nice little logo that you can put on, and it's all about differentiating. And it's about when you're looking at you know, similar activity providers that you are um, looking through and one that has a little award-winning or a great testimonial or something instantly stands out. And um, the process of entering the awards is incredibly valuable. So the process of, of going through it seems sometimes some of them are quite heavy, arduous forms that you go through, but it's a really good opportunity to audit your business, to go through and to give yourself a pat on the back for things that you're doing really well, and also to look at things which you could be doing better, and to then move forward on, on that as well. So entering awards, um, it, it takes time, but it's really worthwhile. Uh, some people like to pay someone to enter an award with them, for them, and they guarantee that you're gonna win or, or whatever, 
Uh, please don't do that because you really don't get the benefit of, of being able to enter them yourself. Um, winning the awards is highly motivational as well, both for your, your team and for your customers. You get credibility. It can lead to great PR, but actually in my experience, certainly in London, there's so much else going on in the, um, around us that actually winning an award, they're sometimes not that interested. So it's more for the credibility, um, and sometimes it does give you a story around it. So things like the mum and working and the flexible working um, side, then the press were very interested in that because they like family-friendly businesses and they like a spin and a story. Um, choose your awards carefully. Have a look at the ones your competitors are entering and have a look at the ones that are a really good fit for your customers. So there are a wealth of awards to enter and uh, I know it seems that we've done loads. That is 10 years worth. <laughs> don't, don't be too worried about it. Um, and local awards are great. So look at your industry awards and local awards, and um, you've got what's on for little ones and things as well. So it does allow you to get noticed for the right reasons. Um, your reputation is everything. So look after your reputation. Uh, be aspirational. And um, be regulated. <laughs> I know we've just had a talk about regulation. It is great. Uh, I don't have to be regulated, but I've chosen to be regulated not by just one company, but I'm regulated by two, because I like the peace of mind it not only gives to my customers, but it gives to me as well. And I don't mind that there's a little bit of paperwork attached to it, because I like the fact that somebody external has come in and said, actually, you're doing it right. Um, I, I like a little bit of control there. It, 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 it feels good. So um, we've chosen to do that, and you're in the same situation that you can if you want. But people will choose a regulated provider. And um, cherish your customers. Communicate the benefits to them. So make sure that you're, you're telling them benefits rather than features of your service when you're communicating. <coughs> just from a, a sort of marketing side. Um, we won't always do things right, we're all human. If things go, don't go to plan, say sorry quickly. Somehow people um, think if they say sorry that they're ad ad admitting that they've done something terrible, but actually you can say sorry even if it wasn't your fault. And the word sorry so instantly sort of removes a lot of stress around things. So say sorry and put it right, and put it right with really good, real good will, and put it right with a lot of extras. You want to delight your customers. You want them to say fabulous things about you. You want them to be recommending you to their other and their friends. I mean, parents are the best ones for recommending each other, and they will talk, and they will all want to know where little James went last week and who did what, and you just need one person who's had one bad experience and it spreads. So make sure that if you had an unhappy customer or someone who, even they're not unhappy, but they're just not delighted, that you are ensuring that they are delighted by all elements of your, um, of your service. So take ownership of mistakes and make sure that everyone in your team does that as well. Have a no blame culture and if things go wrong, you learn from them, and you make sure they don't go wrong again. Um, and make sure you have clear terms and conditions as well, so people know the boundaries, and they know what the rules are, and what they can do, and what they can't do. And tell people when there's good stuff as well. People buy what other people want. So be oversubscribed and be proud of it. And make sure that you are filling your classes to the point of delight. There may be a point where you think, well, I could just squeeze two more people in there and then that would just cover my costs and my overhead that little bit better, it would just increase. If in putting those two extra people on, you are compromising your quality in any way, then don't do it. So just make sure that everything you do is to delight and that you are filling your classes because that way you will get the maximum profit and, um, and you'll cover all your overheads and everyone will be happy. Um, so don't overfill. Um, 
show you have a waiting list. Waiting lists are good. Show when your glasses are full. People don't mind waiting. You think of those Christmas crushes where there's always that toy that everybody wants. I mean, a lot of that is a manufactured demand. If you've got a real demand, tell people about it. People will queue up for it. Um, and also tell people when you have aspirational clients. So Amanda spends her life um, training for major celebrities. Um, my celebrities are not a patch on Amanda's. Um, if you're allowed to say about the major celebrities you, you train for, um, then put it on your website, have some nice little quotes that go out, ask them and share it. We train for royalty though, but we can't say it. <laughs> okay, so stick to what you love and get rid of everything else. When you start off, it's a real temptation to think that you can do it all. It's a temptation to think that um, if, if, you, if you are doing it yourself, that somehow you're saving money. I've certainly done that to start off with. If it's not in your skill set, it's a false economy. So if it's not what you're good at or what you love doing, then pay someone else to do it. And your time is one of the very few things you can never get back again. So treat your time really wisely. I'm going to sit down here. Um, where are we going? So outsource everything, build yourself a team. When you've got a team, you're then able to work on your business rather than being stuck in the middle of it. And that's where the magic starts happening and you manage to grow and suddenly um, you find you've got a much bigger business which is a nice thing to have. Um, it's not always that nice, but it is generally nice. Have apps such as Trello and MeisterTask and things. You can use different apps to manage people working remotely as well. So if you've got flexible working, um, then your team tend to be happy as well. So you can put a lot of your admin type of work um, into cloud-based software, and then you can work remotely as well. So when you're on holiday, they don't work on holiday, but I like to do just an hour in the morning before everyone else is up. I'll do an hour, catch up, and uh, then I can go and have the rest of my holiday I want. So I'll probably do an hour in the morning and then I'll probably do 20 minutes or so catch up later on in the day <clears throat> so that my team back home will know that if they need me, they can get hold of me, um, which is nice. Uh, hire the best. So hire the best, pay well, reward your team, and ensure they feel special. Um, and make sure they feel proud to be working with you. Your team are the face of your organization. So they are the people that everyone's going to be interacting with. So if you're, you know, if you're role models, you're gonna be working for other people's team as well and, and, um, and, and become the face of their organization too. So make sure that everybody out there is happy and enjoying being with you. And if they're not, have a chat and find out what elements need to be changed. It might be a little bit more flexible working, it might be um, you know, something else, but, but just make sure <coughs> so that they're happy. And don't spend time doing stuff that just does your head in, because it will destroy you as well. Um, hang out where your customers are. So know your audience. Um, focus on your Customer avatar. We've really been on various marketing things where they've said, know your customer avatar. But think carefully. Your customers that you've got at the moment, are they the customers that you really want? Are they the ones that are the easiest to serve? Are they the ones that are the most profitable? And if they're not, then shift your marketing slightly to get to the ones that you really want. So there will be some people for whom you're an absolute perfect fit and who are a degree of aspirational for you to get there. And if you shift, if you shift where you advertise, if you shift what Facebook groups you link onto, if you shift what partnerships you're linking up with, you can move that customer base and, uh, and you know, great things can happen from that. So think very carefully about where you advertise, where you build, where you live flyers, and ensure it fits with your brand, where your brand is now and where you want your brand to be as well. And don't be flattered if you're asked to advertise 
Um, when I started off, I was so excited by um, you know, the first local magazine that approached me and said, will you, will you pay however much to put an advert in? Now, of course I gave them my money. But actually, if the media's not right, say no and don't mind about saying no. It's got to fit. Um, and use social media that fits with your audience. So look through the Facebook groups. Work out that it's where your parents, the parents for your attendees, where they hang out. <clears throat> and then in the Facebook feed, make your posts stick out as well. So not only are we standing out in a crowded market generally, but you also have crowded social media. So you want your posts to stand out. So I've been saying, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been saying earlier, when you take a photo of us, could you take us two or three photos? Because Google has got a wonderful little thing which I've discovered quite recently where you can put your photos in. So when it saves your photos on Google, if you click animate and you tick three or four pictures, it will put those pictures together and you will get a little tiny moving picture. And that shows up really well in your feed and people look. Not all the time, you don't want loads of them, but you want a little bit, something slightly different. So we want a few moving pictures, we want some videos, um, we want some infographics, you want different stuff in your social media so that people notice you. Uh, and never sell on Facebook or social media. People are browsing, so don't spam them. Um, and in with that, <clears throat> be generous and share your, share your best stuff. Uh, when we were at the last meeting, we were talking about free classes. And there was a general consensus that actually free classes are a bit of a nightmare. So try and share stuff that isn't going to affect your bottom line and isn't going to adversely affect sort of how you operate and how your competitors operate as well. So blog in places, share things that you've, you've learned about, share testimonials, um, share other people's stories. If you share other people's stuff, credit them, say thank you, it's social media, it's polite. So be nice and, and friendly on social media as well. Um, have some lead generators. We've got a free choking course. We've got um, my book. Please, everyone, I've brought copies of my book for, for everyone. So please take copies of my book if you would like one. You don't have to. But if you would like one, please um, help yourself. They're on the back table there. Um, and we would love a review on Amazon as well. <laughs> but um, please feel free to, to take one. So we've got books that we give away. I blog, I write for various magazines. Um, and we share. Share is good. And um, be consistent. So it's really important that you are steadily out there on, on your social media. If you disappear, then um, they wonder where on earth you've gone. And there's various scheduling tools you can use for that as well. I'm sure you've come across sort of Hootsuite and things. You've got Bitly that you can measure. You've got Buffer that's really easy. You can just press a button and the URL does it for you. And you've got really clever things like Edgar. I don't know if any of you have used Edgar. Edgar Edgar's great. If you've produced um, blog posts and content on your social media feed, you can put it into Edgar and it just re reposts your evergreen stuff so that you've always got a baseline presence on your social media. You have to interact and you have to be there in person as well because it's social media and it has to be in the present. But in order to just keep the consistency there, there's some really clever tools that are pretty, you saw, I'm not technical. They're really easy. And be innovative. So um, we have online learning, um, so we've got a whole load and a whole range of interactive um, online learning where you can learn um, first aid as part of blended learning or you can learn it purely online and you can stop and start whenever you like and it's easy and it's convenient and it tests you and um, you know, a, a lot of children's activity providers um, that I work with do a lot of their first aid training online, purely online. Some do it purely practical, some do it purely online, and some do it blended. So we've got all sorts. Um, Amanda's got her, um, her virtual Amanda that she's producing in, so that eventually, when Amanda's old and on a Zimmer phone, <laughs> then 
she will Even still have, have she will still have virtual Amanda dancing around and entertaining her great grandchildren. So, so there we go. Um, so be innovative. Be clear about your markets. Have a strategy how you're going to grow. So we branched into first aid for pets as well, but it fits within our business. We are first aid experts, but purely first aid. So we've got human first aid, we've got pet first aid, and we've got practical and online versions for all those. So we've got books to accompany them. So in sum to summarize, make your business stand out for the right reasons. Be aspirational with your brand and your customers. Be generous. Share your best stuff. Build partnerships and collaborate with the right people who share your values. Be innovative in order to grow and scale. And concentrate on the elements you love. Work on your business, not in it. Use your time wisely and enjoy it. Thank you very much.